is the third video in the Make Anything series. And in this one, we're gonna use Fusion, we're gonna use the Stepcraft 840, an old restore bandsaw, and some glue. Hi everybody, my name is Lars Christensen, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. This is a complete ripoff of my good friend and hero, Jimmy DeResta. He did a video a few months ago, and you will find the link to that video down in the description. Go and check Jimmy's channel out. I'm always learning something when I'm watching his stuff. Now, Jimmy does everything awesome and freehand. I am gonna use Fusion 360, so let's run the intro. All right, so we're gonna start inside of Fusion 360, and this is where we want to end up. We want uh, something like this file here. That's gonna be the end result. Now, I knew font was gonna be important to make this sign look as good as possible, and this may be a good time to talk about raster versus vector. Now, Fusion 360 is a mechanical CAD software, which means it needs real lines, though that most pictures uh, PNGs or JPEG images are pixelated. So if you ever try to zoom in on one of those, you will kind of see that everything gets blurred, different pixels. So what I'm gonna do here is I wanna convert a JPEG or PNG, a pixelated image, to real vector. And for that, I'm gonna use Adobe Illustrator. Now, I am no Adobe Illustrator expert, and this really comes down to good stuff in, good stuff out, or as negative people say, garbage in, garbage out. What means that whatever we bring out of Illustrator or any other software that can convert a raster image or pixelated image to vector, it depends on the quality we're getting out of that. Now, I was going to use a bandsaw to cut these out Anyways, so I wasn't too concerned here about the quality, but I knew that inside of Illustrator there's something called Image, image Trace, and that I was gonna use here. Again, this comes down to the kind of quality that you want. I was okay with something that maybe wasn't too great. I'm gonna save this out as an SVG file, and you will see that we're later gonna bring that back into uh, to Fusion. Now we're gonna come back to that font in, in a little bit. Um, let's just fire up Fusion here, and I'm gonna start out by making the backboard for my sign here. So this is gonna be 20 inches by 20 inches, so about 500 by 500 millimeters. Um, actually, kind of funny thing here, if you watch Jimmy's video, he had to kind of like do quite a bit of work uh, for his. I had, I was lucky, I had an old spare fence pot laying around that I'm gonna be using, but you're gonna see that later uh, in the video. Um, I want a kind of two arcs to kind of encapsulate the font. So I was gonna go in here and use the slot function. <laughs> this was actually kind of the hardest thing for me to lay out, kind of funny. You don't think that that should be, be too difficult. But I kind of drew up uh, this slot here, added some dimensions, and then you will see that I actually kind of get it fully defined, but it goes outside, outside the box. A little frustrated <laughs> with that. But I decided when that happened not to, uh, not to get mad or anything, but actually I, um, I went and I drew a line and I mirrored uh, that half a donut over on the other side. Uh, and then I went back again and kind of just started just troubleshooting that. And I actually found out that it was my vertical constraint there right in the center that was, uh, was kind of controlling that shape. As soon as I got that out of the way, uh, then I could start dragging in uh, these two slot functions to somewhat, uh, somewhat what looks what I wanted. I extruded this up, and here's just another kind of like quick observation. Uh, you will see that when I extrude it up, that they end up being in the same color as my backboard, and that gave me uh, the indication that I probably didn't have it as separate bodies. I had to join on uh, in the extrude command when I did that. Um, so it's an easy fix. Go over and change that to bodies. But just a quick point, I wanted to make sure that each of these component, uh, or each of these different parts are kept as separate bodies or components, whatever you, whatever you prefer, but definitely not as one big, one big lump piece. All right, so uh, with the two arcs, looks pretty good. I'm ready to bring in my SVG file that we just brought in before. So I'm just gonna place that on uh, the front plane here. You will see that you get some handles right on the screen, and these handles gives you an option to scale the font, and you can also kind of like 
placing it. And uh, again, I'm going to cut each letter out and then glue it into place. So, you know, I'm just kind of here trying to uh, to get the Autodesk uh, to, to kind of look where I, I, I wanted it somewhat. This is more for layout purposes. When I did that, uh, I went in and started cleaning up the SVG file. I didn't want a Diffusion F in there. Uh, that is normally used on <laughs> on every logo you ever see or every sign you see. And I, I want to keep this somewhat clean. And here you will actually see as I'm going in and cleaning this up, I did not get a fantastic result out of Adobe Illustrator. As I'm going in here to uh, try to extrude the Autodesk uh, out, you will see that the O, I can't actually select the outer perimeter of the O. And that's because this SVG file, well, garbage in, garbage out. Illustrator didn't do a very good job because of the settings that I that I had. So I'm here, I'm kind of like going in, I'm trying to select some of these lines and delete them. I know there's overlaying geometry. This is not really very accurate. Again, if you need that accuracy, you need to, uh, to look at Adobe Illustrator or whatever software you're gonna use. You will see I get the O. Uh, finally, it gets that shading, but tells me that now I can extrude it out. And then you will actually see that when I come over to the six on the 360, I also don't get uh, the outline for the, for the center circle. Uh, that don't want to split up either. So again, I have some issues, some cleanup. I just wanted to show you this to kind of like, that's some of the things you maybe have to fight with if you are importing something like an SVG file. I'm literally just going in, selecting lines and deleting them. And in the end here, I actually just, uh, I pulled I pulled the plug and I just sketched a hole right on the, on the, on the face here again. Uh, this was not didn't have to be super accurate. I didn't even I didn't even even fully define it um, As you know that I normally claim you always have to do but I cheated here um, So I <laughs> get this done extrude them all out. I'm not perfect. Extrude that out a half an inch That is uh, the thickness of the MDF board that I was gonna machine this out of and now I'm just gonna go into now I have a bunch of bodies. I'm just gonna go in and hide that back plate Right there, and then I can highlight the Fusion 360. Uh, I'm gonna right click on it, I'm gonna use the move command. And again, I'm just, this here is just visually, because again, I'm gonna be cutting each letter out with a bandsaw and manually glue it in. So that looked pretty good to me. And uh, then just find them all, add an appearance, make them all black, just for, for visual reference, nothing else. Then uh, I wanted the Autodesk slogan, make anything. And I actually just went in and I created a uh, standard sketch text, typed in make anything, and um, Autodesk actually have their own font. So that was kind of easy for me. And I extruded that out a half an, half an inch thickness. Again, the thickness of the MDF port that I had bought. And I get about a request once a week about how do you place letters on a curve. Well, <clears throat> we don't have that function inside of Fusion just yet. I know that they're working on it. So you will see here, I'm literally just gonna use the move command kind of place these letters uh, where I want. Again, if this had to be accurate, I would probably creating my some helping line, some sketch line, you know, offset and arc, and, and so I had something good to reference with. I'm literally just using my eye uh, to create this, this sign here. But that looked uh, pretty good to me. I was uh, somewhat happy with that. Just go in and kind of like move them, move them around. That's about as good as it's gonna get here. Of course, go up and hit the save icon, save it out. And uh, then I had to create the next step of this, what was laying this out for the, the cool Stepcraft 840 router uh, that I have. There's different ways to do this, and we've talked about this on the live streams before. I took the easy way out. I literally just went up and I create a save as of the original sign model. So I'm breaking the link between the sign and the file that I'm gonna using for layout. Some people will tell you that's a good thing, some people will tell you that's a bad thing, but for this sign here, I was perfectly okay with going that route. Then I hit the backboard, because uh, that's not really uh, too important. I also hit the light bulb on the make anything, because I'm actually gonna cheat and just re 
create that again. And then I drew up a rectangle that's gonna assemble my MDF board that I bought at Home Depot for like six bucks. So that's 24 by 24 inches, two feet by two feet. Um, and I moved the arcs down and then you will see I just redid the text again. I just rewrote the make anything again because then it was in a straight line. I didn't have to move it again. Um, I moved the arcs up so I felt like that it fit pretty well uh, within the box. I moved the outline of the box and again, um, have to admit that I didn't fully define that either. The only thing that really drew that up was to kind of lay it out and use it as stock uh, within CAM. Now in CAM, I'm gonna go and set my setup and I'm gonna select that upper left corner, go into the stock tab and set that plate as my stock. And that's actually the last time I need it. Now it's in there whenever I simulate my, uh, my tool path. For tool path, I decided to go easy. I'm just gonna use contour, so 2D contour. I had a uh, border inch two flute, standard carbide end mill, like you would use in metal, that's about six millimeters in diameter. I used some feet and speeds that I think I found on the Stepcraft forum, because this MDF is fairly new to me. 1200 RPMs and a cutting feed rate of 700 millimeters per minute. Then I go into the geometry tab and I select chain for, uh, for these letters. And notice that I select the bottom edge of the letters because that bottom edge is gonna be where our height's gonna be set for our cutter, the depth of cut, that's the next tab here. Now I added a three millimeter uh, offset, so it's actually gonna stay three millimeters from the bottom. One of the things that I really liked about Jimmy's uh, video was that he used, he actually used a bandsaw to cut everything out with. And I had this old bandsaw my father-in-law gave me for free that I've been spending some paint on and some grease on to kind of get it back up and running. And I wanted to use that. So I'm really just using the Stepcraft to kind of like make my life a little bit easier and uh, <laughs> make this video. On the passes tab, I am going to turn on multiple step downs. So two millimeter step downs. And then I can go in and, uh, and hit simulate. Just kind of like get an idea. And I notice here that I actually forgot the center of the O and the D. So I'm just gonna go back in and re-edit that and add that to the geometry. Go back into simulate. And uh, that looks pretty good. But uh, this six millimeter cutters, or quarter inch end mill, it's not gonna get into all the corners. And you will also see that in the A's on the make anything, it didn't cut the center. So here's a neat trick. I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna right click on our existing uh, contour, um, the, the 2D contour we have, and I'm gonna create what is called the derived operation. That means I'm gonna copy all the settings from we just put into the first operation into the second operation. I'm then gonna change my cutter. This time I'm gonna select an eighth millimeter, so three millimeters, so half the size. Uh, change the RPMs to 1600, the cutting feed rate to 250 or 240, I think. And then on the geometry tab, I'm gonna unselect the two big arcs because they are fine uh, with a quarter inch mill, but then I'm gonna turn on rest machining here. Um, and that's all I'm gonna change on this one. And now, if you take a look, you will see that this second tool path, the second contour, only goes in and clean up all the different corners and the two A's uh, on the make anything. So this will just make sharper corners um, and, and, and kind of like clean up between the letters, making it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more accurate uh, like that. That was all I decided to do on the cam. Now I'm ready to go and uh, post it. I'm using uh, the UC CNC post that you can download from Autodesk Post Library. If you just Google that, that will come right up. So with that, there's no excuses. Better, uh, better get it going here. Fire that up in uh, the Stepcraft. They actually comes with a tool changer, what I gotta get mounted on this machine. And when I get the tool changer on, then I'm gonna find out how I'm gonna rig up the shop back hose so I don't have to hold that by hand here. This shot here is actually the feed rate not speeded up. So uh, 700 inches per minute, just to give you an idea about how fast it was actually cutting in, in real life. I also added the slow motion <laughs> image here, just, uh, just to give you that, just for some excitement. And here you will see the eighth inch cutter, or the three millimeter cutter actually being in and kind of cleaning up with uh, that rest machining. Uh, so that's cleaning up all the letters, making sure that it gets tight in the corners. And uh, you will also see here on the two A's, uh, it will go in and uh, uh, in the make anything, it will go in and clean up those centerpieces right there. 
This went pretty smooth. I think the cycle time was about uh, an hour and a half. You can you can check it yourself. The files are of course down in the description area. And then the thing I was most excited about, uh, and that was I was going to use this bandsaw that I have been uh, that I've been kind of shining up. Bought some new parts for it. Got some new pulleys. New, uh, of course, new blade. Um, and uh, I mean, MDF is uh, super easy to uh, to cut, uh, and it was just kind of like a fun little little project. I try to get some different angles of this uh, of this saw here. So I just kind of like I roughed everything out just to get out of the big pieces, and then you will see it come in here, and I'm just literally following uh, that area that the um, that the end mill had, had created. So, I mean, that was super, there was nothing hard about this. This was more fun. This was more just uh, getting a little bit of a time on the, the band. So I had fun with that. You can also see that I'm actually wearing my uh, Jimmy the Rester shirt. Uh, like I said, love his, uh, love his videos. Uh, really cool. And I also used uh, the saw. I tried to get in kind of like in the tight corners where the uh, three millimeter or eighth inch end mill uh, had been and just kind of like try to sharpen them up um, a little bit. Now, one of the things that I really loved about uh, Jimmy's videos, and like I said, I'm always learning something from them, was how he uh, how he attacked uh, the center. Uh, for example, this O that you see here. So, if I had to do this myself, I would probably have drilled a hole through the center or try to figure out how I was going to do that. Well, Jimmy, he just um, he just slid it right through the O, cut out uh, the center, and then just used uh, you know some filler wood to kind of like fill up. Uh, that slot afterwards. I thought it was absolutely uh, brilliant. Sanded them a little, um, and then here I am with the with this uh, plastic wood. It's called um, use a spotter, and then of course finding out that your finger is an easier tool. But this worked really well. Uh, just put them up uh, everywhere I slid through to cut out the center, and then I had a, a, a little needle file that I just kind of like used to smooth smoothen that out. Pretty pretty straightforward with with that. Um, of course, I forgot that six again. I don't know why I had to do that over. And here was the thing that that really I thought was funny um, when when I saw Jimmy's video because this is an old fence that I don't have anymore. But I had this spare piece laying around and uh, from the previous owner of the house. And I thought, ha ha, that's perfect. I'm pretty sure if Jimmy, if you're watching, if you're ever watching this video, I think you're gonna look at this and be like, man, I wish I had that piece of fence for <laughs> when I did mine. Now this is, I hope that Jimmy will be proud of. Uh, I put up a stop on my saw here to make sure that everything is uh, the same length. That's something Jimmy definitely would have done. Um, here's my, uh, my saw here that some people are commenting is dangerous, but I like it. Um, here's a question for you guys uh, who does a lot of this kind of stuff. I'm using uh, Gorilla Wood Glue. I have no idea about what is good glue. I just kind of like picked up that brand and I'd love to know what you guys are using or recommending. Actually, overall in this video, whatever, whatever you can recommend. Also, of course, painting it. And I think that I've come to the conclusion that I will never ever ask anymore how many coats of paint you should put on. I'm just gonna always do two coats. And then here in the end, I kind of like laid out the letters and uh, how I wanted them. And then I used uh, another in industrial Gorilla glue. So still the same brand, Gorilla, uh, Gorilla but just an industrial adhesive for that. Um, and just kind of like laid them out. You're supposed to hold it down for 30 seconds, but uh, screw that. Actually, uh, the K in make, I misplaced that. You will see in a second that I'm going to tap that uh, with a little dowel. Um, the, I will admit that with the two arcs, I actually did put some pencil marks down and some measurements just to, uh, just to make sure that they look pretty good because I thought that that would if they were off, that would definitely uh, that would definitely show. That was the video for the sign. I hope that you enjoyed this little uh, video running through it. If you're watching my live streams, you will now from now on see it sitting uh, over my my one shoulder. I hope these videos are kind of entertaining. Um, love your feedback, your comments down in the comments area as always. And uh, until the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks.